Today on WTF, we're showing you how to make fried gobi with a mango chutney and crushed pistachios. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we help you transform food in your kitchen. I'm Janie. And I'm Hannah. And today on WTF, we're showing you how to do a recipe for fried gobi that has mango chutney and crushed pistachios. Now, you may have already seen fried gobi pop up on restaurant menus all across the country. It's super popular. I definitely always order it when I see it. So we thought it'd be fun to do our take on it um, and show you a different version of fried gobi. That is absolutely spectacular. So I'm going to let Hannah take it away right away because this is a very demo heavy episode and we'll talk a little bit about, you know, what different things we're doing to the fried gobi as we go along. All right, let's first talk about what is the basic process for making a fried gobi. So fried gobi is fried cauliflower and mm -hmm. gobi is cauliflower in Hindi, so that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And to start off, we are going to be making a batter for to put our cauliflower in. So what we have here is our dry ingredients. It is a mixture of chickpea flour, rice flour, and our crisp, crisp coat mm -hmm. UC. So we already have this all mixed up, and then we are gonna be adding a little spice blend of some traditional Indian spices here. You know, we have turmeric, our masala, cumin, a few other things, mm -hmm. as you can see. So we're just gonna add that in. Yeah, and this recipe is gluten-free, which is really nice. Yeah. Give this a good whisk, and then we're just going to go in and add our wet ingredients. So we have water, and as well, we also have some lemon juice. And you're going to want to give this a stir, and I'd say pancake batter is a good consistency to aim for. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I personally always struggle with when I fry vegetables is knowing when it's done on the inside because you can't really tell. Do you have any tips for, you know, how do you know when the cauliflower is done? So I found, especially for this recipe, that when the batter turns golden brown in the oil, that the cauliflower is done. And I would recommend cutting your cauliflower in pretty small pieces. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you want them to all be pretty uniform so they're all frying at the same time. Mm -hmm. But you know, you can always take one out, bite it, and this is raw cauliflower, so we haven't um, boiled it or anything before. Um, so it has a little bit of bite to it, mm -hmm. but I think that's nice. It's not mushy or anything. Yeah. Okay, so just a little bit more water, and then we can go ahead and add in our cauliflower. And that's kind of one of the interesting things about a lot of these recipes is that if you're at home and you're weighing out this batter, you know, on, in the links in our website, you can see all the measurements by weight, but then also by volume. So if you're doing, let's say, half a cup or whatever, it might not be the same as the half a cup that Hannah is doing today. Mm -hmm. So that's why the water, you know, you have measurements for everything, but the point is not to kind of slavishly follow them because you might find that you get to the right consistency with less water or maybe more water depending on you know, your actual ingredients. So always keep that in mind. Uh, I think that's, you know, sometimes when people write in, they're like, we're having trouble with the recipe. Um, sometimes it's because they're trying to follow the recipe too closely, but they're, you know, they're weighing things in a different way, uh, measuring in a different way, way that we are. Yeah, you know, and cooking by feel is always, mm -hmm. I think, more fun. It is, but it's like cooking by feel is a it's a learned skill. I Abs feel absolutely. like you know, like you have to know what the right feel is, and it comes from experience. All right, so oops, let me grab one of these. So as you can see, we have the batter; it's clinging on there, but it's not coating it, and it's not dense. Is I guess what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So what you're gonna do, and personally, I like to scoop up as much batter <laughs> as I can. And then we're just going to add this into our oil. I have our oil set at around 360 right now. And these fry for, I'd say, about three minutes, three to five minutes. So it's a pretty fast process. Okay. 
So as Hannah's frying diesel, we're going to take a quick break and we will be right back with our Ooh. finished fry and then next steps. All right, and we're back and we're just about ready to do the glaze. But of course, before we do that, we wanted to talk about this week's giveaway. And this week's giveaway will be a bag of the Ultra Stick. So Ultra Stick is an amazing ingredient. You can use it, of course, to adhere any size, different size particles to, in this instance, the goby, but on muffins, cakes, we use it in high energy bars to make anything. So it's really great for increasing adhesion. Now you can enter to win the Ultra Stick by leaving in the comments below a dish that you would like to make with the Ultra Stick and let us know what you think. All right, so we have the fried goby. What yes. is next? All right, so next what we're going to be doing is we're going to be glazing it with our mango chutney that we made. So this is a pretty basic recipe. We're using our Fabri deli paste in mango, of course. We have some more spices in here, as well as some vinegar and onion and garlic. And then we blended it up so it's super fine. Nice glaze, it's nice and thick. Mm -hmm. And then we added our ultra stick to it, which is gonna be helping attach and keep on our pistachios and some sesame seeds as well. So we can go in and we have our goby that we just took out of the fryer. Nice and golden brown. And we're just, oh, goodness. Just going to be adding this into our bowl. And then you don't need a whole lot of this. It's very pungent mm -hmm. in, a, in the best way possible, but it has a, packs a lot of flavor. Yeah, so to taste, right? Yes. So we're just going to do, say, a few spoonfuls of this. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to give it a nice shake around. All right, and then we are going to go ahead and sprinkle in our pistachios and our sesame seeds. Yeah. And the cool thing about Ultra Stick is that, so normally if you're doing, trying to adhere larger pieces, what you see is they're kind of all going to fall off. And we'll have a little <laughs> shot somewhere down here that shows you that one batch we made with the Ultra Stick and one batch that we made without. So you can kind of see the difference, but you also have here, these are ones we made earlier. You can kind of see that the pistachio pieces, they're all on here. I can turn it upside down. I can shake it. It's not going anywhere, and that's what we're looking for. All right, and then this is a pretty easy plate up. You're just going to put it right into the bowl. We want add a little more. You could always add some herbs to this as well. Mm -hmm. Really, anything you want to stick on. Cool. All right, and there we have it: our fried goby. This looks great with a mango chutney glaze. All right. We got a big crunchy piece right here. You can hear. I mean, I could hear the snap. Mmm, it is really good. Perfectly fried. tender, it's flavorful, it's got the crunch from the pistachio, which is really nice, super delicious, and you can get today's recipe in the links in the description below. And until next week, sorry, this is a big mouthful. Until next week, from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie. And I'm Hannah. 